welcome back. This I'm gonna do this. I hope it's gonna be a kind of a short video. I'm gonna try to explain a little bit about bias tape for people that doesn't know what it is or what it's used for. Uh, you don't have to purchase bias tape. It's just a it's a type of product that makes things easier during covering. Some of the old timers don't want to use it for some reason or another. Or, you know, maybe several reasons back and forth, but. We do sell it, and I do use it in a lot of occasions. It just speeds things up. I'm gonna try to explain just a little bit of the, what's going on with bias tape. Uh, I think I can write on this maybe. Your fabric in a regular piece of fabric is basically just sheared from natural sink and out or super flight or, or whatever type of fabric it's gonna be. And the weave in this piece of fabric is running this away and this away. And the way it's made, there is maybe a few more strands running one way than the other for you know the shrinkage direction and stuff, but it's basically run that way. So as you can see, these running this way, if you was to try to pull this or tear, you're pulling the, the fibers that direction. There isn't hard, there isn't no moving movement, and it's strong that way. The way bias is made. Let's just picture this as the 70 inch wide roll of fabric. The bias, when they made it, instead of shearing it this way, I don't I haven't I don't know the exact spacing that they use or whatever, but I do know that they'll they'll come in at an angle, say a 45 or whatever, and they'll cut the shears running this away. Well then they'll take the next piece. And, you know, it, I think they sew it mainly before it's cut, but there'll be a sewed seam so that the tape will continually run. So when you buy biased every, say, seven, eight, nine feet, you're going to have this old stitch that's fine to leave there and keep going. But that's just ugly and hard. to. You're going to see that. I usually cut it out and splice right then and keep going. So your biased tape is, is cut at an angle. With that being said... That makes the weave in this is running this away and this away. So in a sense, if I pulled on this, I mean, if I could work it long enough, I could possibly pull it apart. You remember when I showed you about pinking edge and the straight edge, how you pull those fibers out? Well, in a sense, this fiber is only running that long. So, you know, it, 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 it kind of locks on each other and it won't really pull apart, but the more you pull it, it kind of stretches, which it makes it smaller this way. With it having that characteristics, when I showed you for this, like I, I want to kind of always reiterate myself that this is for the beginners to understand. When we talked about going around the tip and using a playing card with an iron or, or getting a hold of it and pulling it all the way around and kind of compounding it, getting rid of wrinkles, uh, that works. What you're doing is when this comes around an edge, straight edge, it'll work fine. But when it's coming around a corner like that, you see the edges are kind of folding up. That fabric has to go somewhere. And that's where we cut a little razor edge in it every four or five inches and let it lay down. Well, you don't want to do that on your pink edge. You want it to be solid. So you're either going to have to use regular pink and tape, whatever width it is, if you're going around something. And you're going to have to keep shrinking. You're going to have to shrink Let's say it's at that angle. You're gonna have when you lay down. You're gonna have to shrink enough to take up a half inch just out of that. So you're gonna do some pretty severe shrinking around there. I'm gonna show you the way this is when you when you come around something and it's got a curve in it. Yeah, it's got a bend, but I'm gonna show you when you pull it. It just has a weird effect that it 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 takes up all the slack and and naturally wants to go down. You actually can have a little wrinkle be, be up on the edge like this once you've glued it down. And if you have a wrinkle like that in the regular, you've got a problem. You've got to shrink it. So you just keep taking your brush and messing with it. Next thing you know, it, it's like the fibers just kind of work in amongst themselves and lay down. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and get set up here and show you the way I put it on. There's, there's several ways to do it. This is one of the ways that, that we do it, and I just kind of want to show this. Uh, what I'm going to do is set up to put, I'm just going to use two inch to go around this trailing edge and it's overlapping enough that it's going to serve its purpose. 
of reinforcing around that edge. What I like to do is, uh, whatever way you do it, uh, whether you take a tape measure across or bend it over, whatever, I'm just going to eyeball this, but you want to get a center mark. Uh, I like to put a center mark every, you know, say, foot, eight inches to a foot, something like that. Just kind of, you want to measure it. You know I mean, I'm just kind of eyeballing this, but you want to get you an exact center mark. Right? And I like to usually go on out and, and know about how much I'm going to use. And what I'm looking for is that, is that sewn edge, sewn edge in there. That I'm, you know, I, I want to know. I really what I'm doing is want to know where it's at. I don't want to start something and spend a bunch of time and run right up to it. And I run right to it. Right and that's that's the the, the song. It's fine. It's it's perfectly healthy. It's not, but at that that I don't like that. And I always cut. And, I'd rather see two of these splices and iron down smooth and not seeing the seeing that edge. In there. That's what that's why I need to stop. And that's just the nature of the way they made it, so they can have continuous runs. All right, I've got it kind of centered, Mark. And if you want to do this before. This is the reason we're getting our good mark for our glue. So we haven't glued nothing yet. It's good to have these little small uh, clamps like this. What I do is, you start at one end, and we're looking at where we're going to have our glue line. What I like to do is looking right down on the top here. I'm just going to kind of come on out past it. Get that in the center, and that way you know there's the same amount hanging right here. I'll go ahead and clamp that one. And you can go as far as you need to go, but if you can kind of look down that, and, and I just barely pulled any tension. And as long as that little edge right there, that that line is setting up in the center, you want it, see how it kind of rocks? You want it setting right in the center. A lot of times I won't try to go all the way around, but let's just say I'm gonna go to right here just for showing purposes. He's got a good view on that. With my left hand, you watch that wrinkle. I'm gonna start pulling a little bit of tension. And you see how that kind of just just work its way right on down. It, that's just that's neat, neat characteristics of this. And you don't need to pull it hard enough that it goes all the way down. You just want to pull it enough that it cuts around it good. And you want to kind of adjust it here. And what a lot of times what I'll do is just go ahead and clamp it right there. All right. Now you can look down on the top of this. Now it's going to kind of want to move left and right, but look down on the top of these marks, like right here. Make sure that's in the center and come over here, give you a mark, and come over here and give you a mark. Now the reason I just didn't take some raw fabric and wrap it around, when I did that little pull, this fabric got a little narrow. So if you would have took this before you did anything and laid it around it and measured, you'd ended up with a line way down here and then when you pulled it tight, you'd have had a glue line standing out. So that's why I like to go ahead and kind of pull it where it's gonna go. It kind of pulls that edge down and you get your mark and at this point where this is clamped you know i could continue on here and, and going all the way around this is kind of hard to do i'll just do it in sections but you can see how just just pulling that see how when i pull that what it does to those now i'm not going to put this on but you'll you'll get your marks on both sides take it off connect all of your marks do your normal thin coat let it dry for four or five minutes another thin coat and being the nature going around the edge you know you should be able to wet a coat and put it in but a lot it wouldn't hurt to do one more thin coat or do a thin coat or maybe a thick coat because at this point you want it to glue down good and not be messing around with you once you get it glued and dried this situation is kind of hard to wet it all down and then lay all this in wet so this situation i normally get it pulled tight and lay it back up here on the dry glue. And then I go ahead and, and just on this trailing edge and maybe wet it in with some thin glue. Now you've got that tension set. Then you can lay it down and take your brush and just start wetting it through. Using the thin glue to carry some glue in and wet it through, trying to stay in your line. And then at that point, you're right back where you were with these. Once it's, up, once it's glued down, 
two more coats of thin on it, and then you're ready to do the iron. And I usually just work it right around the end, and when you're done, you can do all your trimming. And with that said, that's about all I can really say on the bias tape. It works nice around the leading edges of like a J or the track the tip of a J3 or something like that. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's not quite as long of a roll and it's a little more expensive, but on a whole project, you know, you wouldn't buy one roll. You're going to buy four or five rolls of this or that. One roll of it, you pretty well take care of. Like this is three inch, and then maybe, or this is two inch, and maybe three inch on the stab of like a pipe or plane or, you know, whatever. Uh, you'll pretty well take care of the whole plane one roll. So I hope I kind of, I hope you got something out of that for the beginners to understand that. It's just, it's just a neat product. When you pull that tight, you, you can see right there how much I'm sliding that. I mean, that, you know, and if I keep, I'm just gonna go ahead and, if I was to have kept pulling that, and kept pulling that, if he gets up, see how much above that line I already, I done got it so narrow, it ain't doing any good. So when you, when you pull that line down, you get all this centered and you do that first pull, you want to pull just enough that it starts kind of laying over. And when you glue that back, when you're gluing down, you're going to think, well, now this is kind of wrinkly. I'm going to tell you, you can work your wrinkle up that way and then come back here and work the wrinkle up. If you've got a wrinkle like that and it's all glued on both sides, you take that brush and just mess with that and it's amazing. It just, I don't know where the fabric goes. It goes in amongst on itself or something. It just, it flattens right down. So. That'll conclude the video on, on the bias tape. I'm, I just stepped outside. You probably could hear the, the rain. and That's why I got wet. You probably heard a little racket. I got a, one of the mascots here gets a little afraid every time it thunders. So one of the hunting dogs, she has to come in every now and then. So that's probably what you heard. I heard her sneezing or making a racket. Thank you for tuning in.